Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to today's video. Today we're finally gonna go over the single turbo setup on the S4. It's taken us a little bit to get this all set up, uh, little modifications here and there, and uh, a lot of the lays on parts and whatnot. But we finally got everything here, and now I'm gonna give you a quick guide through on everything we needed to do, all the parts you need, and all the little tips and tricks on what you need to do to single turbo your S4. Before we keep going on, I wanted to ask you to please hit that like button, hit that notification button, and also hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate all the support you guys have been giving me lately. Let's keep it going. So we'll kick off the walkthrough with the most essential parts first, and we'll start here with our 2.8 exhaust manifolds. So these are required for the single turbo kits that use either the excess power, the Project B5, or the 034 Motorsports single turbo kits. They all are pretty much identical except for fitment, which we'll see in a bit. Um, but they all bolt on to these 2.8 manifolds, which makes it super easy. Uh, these are easy to find, they're super cheap, and just, again, a great option uh, to get started with. You can find these in either A4 2.8s or Passat 2.8s. They're the exact same, so it doesn't matter which car you get them from. Next part of the essentials is the excess power single turbo kit. So without the single turbo kit, there's no going single turbo. So the turbo kit bolts directly onto the 2.8 manifolds for each side of the up pipe. Uh, you'll see the Y here where they V-band onto the turbo. Uh, these are only available with precision V-band flanges. Uh, so if you needed to use a T3 or T4, you'd have to either modify or use an adapter to go from the V-band up to the T4, which can be a bit of a pain, but there is a lot of great precision turbos out there, a lot of good options. So definitely not a bad uh, place to start. The kit also includes the downpipes, which you see here. The downpipe is a two piece of downpipe and mid pipe. It also has three O2 sensors built into it, which is very nice. And I forgot to mention as well that the up pipes do have an O2 on either side. And it's great that they include all these uh, for emissions and also for tuning. It's always good to have O2 readings pre-turbo. Next up, you need a turbo, of course which in our case ended up being a Precision 5858. This is a journal bearing turbo. I was gonna go with a ball bearing turbo, but I'm not 100% sold on this being the size that I want. So this is almost like a test to see how this turbo performs, how I like this boost profile, and just overall how I like the power level from the 5858. Um, other options I was looking into was either a GT35 or going for Precision 6262, as well as a few other options that were outliers. But of course, to go single turbo, you do need a turbo. So definitely put a lot of research and funds behind that part of your build. Next up, we have our wastegate. So we're gonna sneak past the turbo here a bit. And we're looking at a Tile MVR 44 millimeter wastegate. So again, this is the limitation of the single turbo kit offered by Excess Power. It will only receive a 44 millimeter wastegate because that is the flange that is attached to it. You can always do the modification to go for smaller or larger flange uh, to fit whatever wastegate brand or size you want. But this is a great wastegate. It's a small size. It fits under the intake manifold, which is the most important part. And uh, it'll get the job done. You also have the option for water cooling if you needed it. In this case, I'm not running water cooling to it. This car will not be driven that hard that often. While we're speaking of it, I honestly think it is terrible placement for a wastegate. Maybe that'd be the only place that it fits and that's why it's there, but uh, it's just a hard to get to spot and uh, not the best way, I think, to plumb a wastegate, but it's done and it's there. Another thing worth mentioning here is that when we come from the wastegate up here, uh, as you can see, the pipe coming from the wastegate is routed down and it's actually an open-ended pipe. So I thought it was worthwhile to mention because those gases are getting dumped right into the atmosphere. There's no redirection back into the exhaust and they don't go through a catalytic converter. It might be an issue with emissions in some states, so just keep that in mind. Next one up is pretty simple, but also often overlooked. As you could tell here, this is the driver's side of the motor and there is no oil fill cap on this side. So the valve covers were actually uh, reversed. So I put the passenger side on the driver's side and vice versa. And the reason we did that is so that we can have access to our breather port right here on top of the valve cover because we can't run our PCV system the same exact way that we had it when it was stock uh, back through here because all of that would just melt. 
So when you're going single turbo, you will need to run a catch can, and that's the reason we went ahead and reversed the valve covers. So we have access to these breather ports up here. As you can see, we have the stock connectors uh, removed from the OEM hose, and those will clip in here, and then will be rerouted over to the catch can, which we will put on the driver's side of the engine. And for the port in the back, we did the same thing, took the stock connector, ran it to the back, and we have this hose here, which is gonna come over and feed the catch can. So just keep that in mind. You will have to figure out another way to run your PCV hoses, um, most likely to a catch can. There's really no other alternative uh, to go OEM style. The next thing isn't at all necessary when you're going single turbo, but it definitely does help with aesthetics, and that's going with a billet fuel rail. In this case, I did the integrated engineering fuel rails. I'll pick these over the 034 ones because of the bigger boss port. So these are dash eight ports. The 034 ones have dash six ports for on both sides of the fuel rail. Um, in this case, I'm only running dash six fuel lines, but I always have the option to go bigger if I ever wanted to and not have to switch out fuel rails, which is a big plus for me. And again, not necessary, but it definitely helps with cleaning things up and making it look nicer in here. You don't have those crosses going all over your fuel rail and it's nice and in this case black and it goes with the entire scheme of the car next thing up is a little harder to see because of the angle we have here but you can see here i had my intake manifold powder coated in black chrome and the back of it doesn't necessarily match that color so what happened here is when i was installing the turbo you guys can see how close that clearance is i had to take off about an inch from the back of the manifold on the right side to clear the cold side of the turbo and a um, little under an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch on the left side here on the pa on the driver's side. This one wasn't necessarily uh, bad uh, with the clearance, but I do want to put on a turbo blanket. So this gives me the extra clearance I need there. Uh, but overall, I have about an eighth of space now between the cold side of the turbo and the intake manifold. So it's still pretty tight. This is something you might have to do depending on your turbo size and Again, these kits don't have the best quality control, so every single one might be slightly different. Um, but in this case, for the $400 I paid for it versus its competitors, which uh, are at or well over $1,000, a few hours to modify the intake manifold wasn't too bad. So I'll definitely take it. I'll put up some pictures of the modifications that I had to do, so that way you get a better idea of what I did and um, how much needed to be cut off to clear these two sides, the cold side and the hot side of the turbo. So there are much more elegant ways to do this and I've had a few people tell me that, which is okay. And um, again, everyone can find their own solution. Uh, like for example, having a distribution block under, but this is what I did for my uh, vacuum ports. So I went ahead and drilled this to 1 8 MPTs and then just uh, put a barb right on top. So this will drive my blow off valve. This will also drive the brake booster as well as any other uh, vacuum or boost lines that I need. For example, like a boost gauge or whatever it be. So I decided to put them right on top. Makes it super easy instead of having to go under the manifold in case I ever need to tee any of these off. Um, again, you could find a much cleaner, neater solution like going under or on the sides or doing one hole and just doing a distribution block. Uh, but this is what I ended up doing on mine. Now we're looking at a bit that's very important to turbo operation. So this here that you see is our oil feed line. So the S4 has a distribution block, two sided block on the back because the motor is usually twin turbo. So on each side, you have a hole for a banjo bolt and banjo fitting. What we did to modify this so that we could run this one line to our turbo is on one side, in this case, the driver's side, we blocked off that one banjo uh, hole. So you just use a bolt, same size, same thread pitch as the banjo, and you block that off. On the other side, we need a banjo fitting, so the thing that goes around the bolt, that is 12 millimeters in size and goes to a dash four male on one on the other end. The reason we went dash four is because we need to run a dash four oil feed line into our turbo, which is what you see here. So it's the line going into the banjo, which is a 12 millimeter banjo hole. 
into a dash four port, which will give us exactly what we need here. Now up top, we have that dash four line, which ends in another female dash four port. And then from there, we have a right angle, one eighth MPT into male dash four. Uh, the one eighth MPT goes into the turbo, of course, that's what the turbo receives as the oil feed line. And then the dash four goes back onto this oil feed. So that completes our oil feed loop here. Now for our oil drain, we have a similar setup here. So at the bottom, we have a flange for the oil drain. So that's the precision oil drain flange that again belongs to precision turbos. And then that is transitioned into a dash 10 male port, which we have this right angle dash 10 fitting that's going to our oil drain line here, which goes all the way down. And down here it meets into our oil pan. So this silver piece you see here is an oil drain flange adapter that we got from 034 Motorsports. So what this does is take the hole that we have in the oil pan and transitions that into a male dash 10 fitting, which we could then use uh, the dash 10 end on this hose to attach to. So this is a pretty leak free way of getting this done. If it wasn't for this little adapter that 034 makes, then really we would have to modify the stock oil drain line and attach a hose to it to make it all work, uh, which could lead to some issues. Now on this side, uh, we have a pretty similar setup, but no hose going to it. So we had the same exact adapter that we had on the other side that transitions from the oil pan into the male dash 10. But since we have no hose here, we use this cap. So this is a dash 10 cap, seals it all up and again, leak free. So there are other solutions for this. Um, you could finagle a plug um, using some gasket sealant and other things like that. But this is the safest way to do it. And by safest, I mean leak free. So we'll go backwards here um, from what we did from the oil uh, feed and then oil drain. And we'll start with the coolant drain here. So this is our coolant drain line on our passenger side. And as you can see here, it's still attached to that freeze plug that had that nipple, um, just like it was stock. But instead of the hose running under the bracket for the motor mount here and back to the turbo, we replaced the hose with the same size hose and actually ran a plug here. So we just have something plugging the end of the hose. It's out of the way here, won't hit anything else. And uh, we won't have coolant spewing out of here. This isn't as neat as solution as what we had for the oil drain, but it will definitely get the job done still. Now this one is a little tougher to show you uh, because of where the turbo is, but what we're looking at here is our coolant feed line. So because our turbo is oil cooled, it doesn't have a coolant line going into it. We had to block off these ports. So there's two ways to do this. One way is to run a hose just like we did here. Um, attach it to the nipples that were already existing and then go to the end and plug it just like we have here on the passenger side. The other solution is much neater, um, but also a little more work and kind of uh, puts you in a situation in case you wanted to go back to uh, the twin turbo setup or if you had a turbo that needed uh, coolant ran through it. So what I've seen others do is cut the nipples off and then they will weld them shut um, it's a again, neater solution. Uh, it's leak proof. You won't have any issues there, but if you ever needed that coolant line for anything, it's completely gone. Uh, so in this case, I just ran the hose, capped it off and, um, should be leak free, hopefully. And that's how I left that there. Okay. So now we moved away from the motor a bit and I wanted to show you a few other things that need to be modified when you're doing a single turbo install. So first of all is your wiring harness. So you don't have to go as crazy as I did here. I went ahead and uh, shaved a bunch of ports and ran the harness through the back of the firewall to make things neater. But what you will have to do is figure out a way to uh, loosen up your harness a bit so you could bring it over and above here and attach it to the top part of the firewall. Um, and the reason we do this is to get it away from as much heat as possible. And on the right side here, while well, looking at the driver side, you're going to have to um, also heat wrap um, like DIE wrap, just like we have here, uh, just to protect the harness from melting through since we have the down pipe and the hot side of the turbo there. Uh, so keep in mind, you will have to do uh, simple modifications like that to make sure everything uh, fits and nothing gets melted. 
Well, that's all I had for you today, guys. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope you were all able to learn a little something. If you decide to go for single turbo on your S4, um, I'll be honest, it's a bit of a hassle. I hope it's worth it. I don't know yet. Um, we'll see once the car is running. I really just did it because I wanted to see and hear my turbo. Um, this isn't a daily car. I drive it on the weekends every so often. Uh, so I just run into something a little more ridiculous, I guess you could say. Um, and I think this will do it for me. Um, it's been a crazy process. So hopefully by next week we'll have the engine in the car and everything will be running well. And uh, I'll be able to get you guys some sound clips and just some video of um, the engine going in the car and everything uh, turning on, uh, which would be great. Uh, I want to thank you all again for the support. Please like and subscribe and also hit that bell notification icon. It helps a lot. I said icon. I meant icon. Um, but I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. There's also going to be a bunch of links in the description below for all the stuff I use, where I got it, and um, just a list of overall parts needed to go single turbo. And if you guys have any further questions other than that, you can uh, check me out on Instagram right here. Ask me anything. I'm willing to help. Peace.